All right, well, let's get some more on those currency calls. And uh, we're joined by Lachlan Meekin from Go Markets. Lachlan, oh, good yeah. to see you. All right. Um, well, you, before we get to the Aussie, let's, why don't we start with what you're seeing uh, out of the US at the moment off the back of that data that I just mentioned. Um, and then perhaps we can lead into what you're seeing uh, with, uh, with Europe and, and therefore the euro. Yeah, well, the US, um, I mean, the dollars, it's come to an end, this, this kind of amazing run it's had since mid-July, which was which saw the 10-year the yields get well above that 4%. Um, the data was obviously very strong up until this week, but uh, there's been a real slowdown. There's this disinflationary data has come out the last week or so. The, the JOLTS report, uh, as you said, the ADP, consumer confidence. Um, the 10-year yields are always going to struggle about that above that 4%, I thought, and sure enough they're, they're a bit shaky they're starting to come down that's that's obviously put pressure on the us dollar um it, it did hit a pretty te- pretty important technical level on the dollar index around 104.50 which was the highs of uh, i think june july so um yeah not surprised to have a bit of a pullback on that on that weaker weaker data and also obviously a, a more dovish repricing of of the fed going forward uh, obviously tonight though there's some big big figure the pce and tomorrow the nfp so i think if if the trend continues use with those uh, as we've seen the last few days and there'll probably be more declines for the US dollar. All right so are you are you confident perhaps that it's past the peak? For now mate I think short term yes I think um, what we're seeing in the data there, there was that as I said that real push in yields up above that four and going back to late last year that's, they struggled above that point and I, I assume they would again and they seem to have. Um, I think that bad news is good news is for equity, it's good, good news for risk, and that seems to be what we'd be getting from Eurozone, also from um, from the US and to Australia, even with the CPI figure yesterday. So uh, more than likely, risk on will start coming back into the market, uh, and that is is dollar bearish, especially at these kind of overbought levels where it's 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 you know it's up almost four percent. I think it's over four over four percent since July. So I, I expect a bit of a pullback here in the short term. Absolutely. All right. Oh, you mentioned uh, Europe there. We did have, as I mentioned, those um, uh, the CPI numbers out of Germany. Uh, it seems to have accelerated again. What what are we seeing there? I mean, is that that increased the likelihood we're going to see more hikes from the ECB? Do you think? How's that likely to translate as far as the uh, the I, US concerned? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the euro was the best performing um, currency overnight on those figures. They they were a little bit mixed, and um, there were some Spanish CPI figures too, but. Overall, certainly um, had a lot more in it for the Hawks on the ECB than the Doves. So um, not surprising the Euro busted through that 109, that psychological level. It's, it's halfway to 110, which it could test, I think, the Euro versus the US. That is, um, depending on these figures, the, the US the next couple of nights. I, I, I could see that the, the market's a bit split on what the ECB is going to do, whether they're going to hike in, uh, September, October. Um, I would probably go for the September after these figures yesterday. Uh, so I think the the euro will be supported for the next couple of weeks anyway on that. Um, after that, it's, it's difficult to say. I, I, short term, I, I can see dollar weakness. I can see risk on. I can see the euro rallying um, with what we've seen so far. And, and if the trend does continue in these US figures tonight and tomorrow, um, there's certainly a bit more upside, I think, in the euro up until that ECB meeting anyway. Okay, Lachlan, let's bring it back home then, talk about the Aussie. But uh, what you've seen this week, certainly in terms of the data with that CPI read, uh, look, inflation lower than expected. Um, I remember when it, uh, when it dropped, uh, the Aussie dollar dropped consequently and, and uh, then sort of made mm. its way to recover those losses. So what's going on there? What are you seeing with the Aussie in reaction to the broader trends we're seeing with the Australian economy? It was a, an unusual reaction. I mean, it, it, the the initial reaction was expected. The real dip in the in the Aussie against all currencies, uh, but it did retrace really quick. So that's for the Aussie dollar bulls. That's that's a very good sign. It's it's like um, the CPI was, was a very brief effect, and then the kind of the overall risk on of the market uh, dragged the Aussie back up. Um, there's a lot of doom and gloom about the Aussie. I mean, I keep reading in the mainstream media about it, China imploding, and it's going to go to the fifties. But I'm a little bit bullish certainly on the short term for it anyway there's a few factors i think um the rba they've it's been priced in they're going to i think actually cut a 30 percent chance they're going to cut the next meeting that's very unlikely to happen so there's going to be some uh bullish or hawkish 
repricing, I think, after that. Also, the US dollar, um, the Fed's expected to hike at about 15%, and I don't think they'll hike in September either. So I, I've, I see a bit more upside for the Aussie US. Um, a bit of a sugar hit from the, the stimulus measures that, that China have done as well. Whether they're effective in the long term, we'll see, but certainly in the short term, I think they'll give the Aussie a boost. Um, iron ore, gold, both rallying very strongly. The, the, the Where the 1010 spreads are, I mean, the Aussie 10 yield versus the US 10 yield um, seems to have bottomed out at around that, you know, negative seven basis points, which last time it was there, the Aussie was around 66. So the key level for the Aussie, I think it's at 65. It was a big support to lay down. It, it fought valiantly to hold it, but it couldn't with those surging US yields. But the 64 has um, certainly held very strongly. And now we're seeing it test at 65 it did, did pop above it last night so um if you can get above that and hold that 65 and re, uh, reinsert that as a support uh, i certainly see a little bit more upside on the aussie in the next couple of weeks um but a lot of that will obviously depend on these us figures tonight and tomorrow night yeah so lachlan then you, you cannot you cannot see uh, the aussie having a five in front of it then no i know i no i don't i don't i'm i'm probably a bit optimistic sometimes the aussie but um i've i the support levels on the way down have been very strong. There's also very big support at 62 if it does get down there. Um, and just, just everything else kind of gelling together. I, I think we'll, we'll stay in these kind of low to mid-60s. Um, I don't think we'll get much higher than 66, say, but I can't see a five, mate, no. Unless something drastic happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, mm. uh, let's, let's hope that... We well, never know happens. these days.